Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Sorwin Vega's brand new LA-110 home theater subwoofer. This is the first new home theater subwoofer that Sorwin Vega has created since getting the band back together again. You're probably wondering, what is he talking about? To give you a brief history on the company, up until June of 2020, Sorwin Vega Mobile was under Diamond Audio, and Sorwin Vega Home and Pro Audio were owned by Gibson. Now that Sorwin Vega Mobile has purchased the remaining Sorwin Vega brands from Gibson, that means all three brands are back under the same roof again, and the new LA series is their first model line since getting the band back together. So I'm very curious to see how the new LA series stacks up to the competition. In this video, I'll go over the TS parameters of the driver, construction quality of the cabinet, and then we'll take a look at the amplifier. So how will this subwoofer stack up? Let's find out. Before I start this look inside video, I wanted to give a shout out to Blaze2051. I really appreciate the couple of super thanks donations that I received from him. It's people like Blaze that help keep this channel going. Any donation I receive will be used towards the purchase of speakers and subwoofers that my subscribers would like to see on this channel. Thanks again Blaze, your support and donation is much appreciated. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the plate amplifier and it's held in by 10 Phillips head screws. Wow, that amplifier is really stuck in there. I'm gonna have to remove the subwoofer driver and then push the amplifier out from the inside. The subwoofer is held in by eight three millimeter Allen screws. I like it when manufacturers use Allen head screws versus Phillip head screws because they are less likely to strip out. Plus, I think they are more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. The subwoofer driver is finally loose, but Sirwin Vega has soldered the speaker wires to the terminal plate on the back of the driver, so I'll need to disconnect the speaker wires at the amplifier. In my opinion, soldering the speaker wires directly to the terminals on the subwoofer creates a much better connection than using clip-on terminals. You don't see this attention to detail very often at this price point. Nice job, Sirwin Vega. Now that I have the subwoofer driver removed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hand to force the amplifier out from the cabinet since it's so well stuck in there. So let's give it a shot, see what happens. Wow! Well, I got it out, but it cost me a pretty good smack on my head right here. Holy cow. Oh. There isn't a whole lot of information on this amplifier in terms of power rating, but I would assume it's around 100 watts, since the peak power rating on this subwoofer is 200 watts. The features on this amplifier include a low-pass crossover that is adjustable from 50 to 150 hertz, adjustable phase control, and volume control. Inputs include low-level stereo RCA or LFE RCA inputs, as well as high-level speaker inputs and outputs. The high-level speaker inputs are great for people who have older receivers or pre-amplifiers that do not include a sub-out connection. The two rotary knobs for adjusting the volume and low-pass crossover have a nice solid feel to them and rotate in a smooth manner. I know it sounds weird having to say this, but some of the ultra-budget subwoofer amplifiers that I have tested have had extremely cheap feeling knobs that can be extremely difficult to rotate. I'm guessing this subwoofer utilizes a Class AB amplifier design, but I don't know for sure since there is no information on this, and I couldn't find a schematic. The capacitors on the amplifier have the branding Success on them. 
I'm not familiar with this brand, but I'm guessing this is another cheap Chinese capacitor manufacturer. These types of parts being used in budget subwoofers are pretty typical at this price point, so I'm not surprised by this because all manufacturers who create affordable subwoofers do it. Soren Vega does offer a one year parts and labor warranty on this amplifier, so there is some peace of mind in the event of a problem. For a subwoofer that has an MSRP of $399, I was really impressed with the construction quality of this cabinet. For starters, the front baffle is 1.25 inches thick. Normally at this price point I see front baffles between 0.75 inches to maybe 1 inch in thickness. Here are a few screenshots of other front baffles that I have measured. There is also a center support brace that ties all of the side walls together which help reduce cabinet resonances. Even the inside of the cabinet walls are lined with good quality damping material. I wasn't expecting to see much if any damping material at this price point, but it's there. The rear cabinet wall is 3 quarters of an inch thick and I would assume the sides of the cabinet walls are too. This cabinet has two rear facing ports and each port is flared on both ends. The ports are 2 inches in width and are around 7.5 inches in length. The color that my subwoofer is finished in is called espresso. I really like this color because it matches really well with the dark wood that I have in my theater room. But Serwin Vega offers these cabinets in a variety of different color options to fit your decor. Even though this cabinet is finished in a vinyl wood grain wrap, it still does a pretty good job of convincing you that it's real wood veneer. I think the main reason it does such a great job of fooling people is because the finish has a wood grain texture in it instead of being completely smooth like most finishes are in this price category. In my opinion, the quality of this cabinet is well above average for this price point. Nice job, Serwin Vega. Next, I connected the LA-110 to my Dayton Audio DATS V3 to determine where the port tuning is at. If you look at the chart, the lowest point between the two peaks is the port tuning for this subwoofer. Port tuning came in at 35Hz. The 10 inch driver from the LA-110 is pretty average for this price category. Have I seen better? Of course. Have I seen worse? Absolutely. This driver features a stamped steel basket and also has a vented pole piece. A vented pole piece helps the trapped air behind the dust cap escape during those long strokes and will also help cool the voice coil indirectly. The surround appears to be made from butyl rubber and should have a long service life. The comb material appears to be made from polypropylene and has a paper-like material that is laminated to the back side of the cone. The motor structure is pretty decent for this price point and should help give it some pretty decent bass. For comparison, I have included a picture of the driver from my Klipsch R10SW which had a similar MSRP to the Serwin Vega LA110. The motor structures and frames are pretty similar, but I would have to give the nudge to the Serwin Vega since they are using a vented pole piece on their drivers. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. The Serwin Vega came in at 5 pounds and 0.3 ounces, and the Klipsch came in at 5 pounds and 9.7 ounces. Now let's get the Serwin Vega on the bench and measure its TS parameters. Here are the TS parameters of the 10 inch driver that Serwin Vega is using in the LA110. This driver has a resonant frequency of 30 Hz, so this subwoofer should be pretty comfortable playing low frequency notes. The DC resistance measured between 3.7 and 3.8 ohms. Total Q came in at 0.5497 and voice coil inductance is reasonably low for this price point at 1.628 millihenries. As a general guideline, QTS values of 0.4 or below indicate that a driver is well suited for a vented enclosure and a QTS between 0.4 and 0.7 indicate the suitability for a sealed enclosure. QTS of 0.7 or above indicate suitability for a free air or infinite baffle application. However, there are exceptions to these rules. Serwin Vega must have determined there was an exception to this rule and decided to use this driver in a vented enclosure anyways. BL product is another important variable to look at because it gives us the measurement of motor strength for a given driver. For subwoofers, the higher BL is, the better. Think of BL as how good of a weightlifter a speaker driver is. The higher BL, the more magnetic force and strength the motor structure can exert on the cone. 
The LA110 driver has a BL of 8.89 newton per amperes or tesla meters. I'm told newton per amperes and tesla meters are interchangeable. So how does this data compare to my Klipsch R10 SW driver? The driver from my Klipsch is a little higher at 10.295 tesla meters, but the Klipsch also has a higher resonant frequency of 51 hertz. As you can see, cherry picking one variable and comparing it doesn't give you the full picture of how a driver will perform. There are many variables that have to be taken into consideration. And that's my look inside video of the brand new Serwin Vega LA110 home theater subwoofer. Some of the things that I really like about this subwoofer are its cabinet. The construction quality and finish on this cabinet is one of the nicest I have seen at this price point. If you're curious about how the LA110 subwoofer sounds and how it will perform in my SPL test, then look for my review video, which I hope to have out next month. In my review videos, I go over how the subwoofer will perform and sound in a variety of room sizes, and then perform an SPL test on it. Please keep in mind that I'm doing these videos when I have free time from work and family, so there might be some delays in some of the release dates that I provide. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video of the new LA110 subwoofer. So long, and happy listening.